the material part of the practice is quite central to the making of a work, but it's often something that only becomes visible to me somewhere along the way. It just cannot happen in any other form but through a photograph or you know, certain drawings that certain materials are going to interact with or there are times when the studio might extend into the radiology lab of a doctor where multiple x-rays of food become like a journey through a cosmic field where these little fragments of sustenance permeate an entire intergalactic space. And then all of these are led to by certain impulses and those impulses are really hard to put your finger on. It's almost like a co of an idea and in the idea there is in some ways a small directive in terms of what might actually give this idea some kind of material form. At other times it's a spatial unfolding of some of this into an installation form. It's like an extended vocabulary. It's just a wide toolbox of things and you have ideas that pick their own tools. You assist that process. The choices of materials are essentially following the trail of certain kinds of creative intuitions that actually draws you to material and often see that in retrospect this could not have been any other way. For a piece such as Covering Letter, it's a letter, a piece of correspondence that becomes the centre of the work. It's a letter written from one of the greatest proponents of peace, Mahatma Gandhi, reaching out to one of the most brutal perpetrators of violence, Adolf Hitler, cohabiting the planet at that same moment in time. In a way, this image came to me as this atomizing letter, almost like a traversable piece of correspondence that somebody can actually stand in with their body in this shaft of illumination. For the longest time, the image was really an image of mist, and it really is a film of mist. But it's only years later, you know, that you kind of realize that mist cannot remain mist. After all, the recipient of this letter is Adolf Hitler. And it sort of transforms the, the dimension of the work into a sort of bewildering dimension that, that really was unforeseen when I made the work. When I actually look back, some of the things that preoccupy me now have preoccupied me at all times. And so I actually see that there's a kind of time in the 90s that corresponds to my thinking now, when I was 20 years younger or more. The fact that these very themes, the themes of time, death, sustenance, sleep, all kinds of these questions recur, but they have been directed in various ways between something that seemed terrestrial and on the ground and something that seemed afar and away in the sky. You know, that goes back now 20 years and I think solar positions or lunar positions and lunar locations and all these kinds of things, you know, they continue to sort of populate my imagination today. There are various ways in which this, the same ideas and same inquiries have taken various forms, you know. <laughs>